A reading from the second book of Chronicles. After the death of Jehoiada, the princes of Judah came and paid homage to King Joash, and the king then listened to them. They forsook the temple of the Lord, the God of their fathers, began to serve the sacred poles and idols. And because of this crime of theirs, wrath came upon Judah and Jerusalem although prophets were sent to them to convert them to the Lord. The people would not listen to their warnings. Then the Spirit of God possessed Zechariah, son of Jehoiada, the priest. He took his stand above the people and said to them, God says, why are you transgressing the Lord's commands so that you cannot prosper? Because you have abandoned the Lord, he has abandoned you. But they conspired against him and at the king's order, they stoned him to death in the court of the Lord's temple. Thus, King Joash was unmindful of the devotion shown him by Jehoiada, Zechariah's father, and slew his son. And as Zechariah was dying, he said, May the Lord see and avenge. At the turn of the year, a force of Arameans came up against Joash. They invaded Judah and Jerusalem did away with all the princes of the people, and sent all their spoil to the king of Damascus. Although the Aramean force came with few men, the Lord surrendered a very large force into their power, because Judah had abandoned the Lord, the God of their fathers. So punishment was meted out to Joash, after the Arameans had departed from him, leaving him in grievous suffering. His servants conspired against him because of the murder of the son of Jehoiada the priest. He was buried in the city of David, but not in the tombs of the kings. The word of the Lord. Forever I will maintain my love for my servant. I have made a covenant with my chosen one. I have sworn to David, my servant, forever I will confirm your posterity and establish your throne for all generations. Forever I will maintain my kindness towards him, and my covenant with him stands firm. I will make his posterity endure forever and his throne as the days of heaven. If his sons forsake my law and walk not according to my ordinances, if they violate my statutes and keep not my commands. I will punish their crime with the rod and their guilt with stripes. Yet my mercy I will not take from him, nor will I belie my faithfulness. Dominus vobiscum, et cum spiritu tuo, 
Lexio Sancti Evangelii Secundum Mateum. Gloria Jesus said to his disciples, No one can serve two masters. He will either hate one and love the other, or be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body and what you will wear. Is not life more than food, and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds in the sky. They do not sow or reap. They gather nothing into barns. Yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are not you more important than they? Can any of you, by worrying, add a single moment to your lifespan? Why are you anxious about clothes? Learn from the way the wild flowers grow. They do not work or spin. But I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendor was clothed like one of them. If God so clothes the grass of the field, which grows today and is thrown into the oven tomorrow, will he not much more provide for you, O you of little faith? So do not worry and say, what are we to eat? Or what are we to drink? Or what, or what are we to wear? All these things the pagans seek. Your heavenly Father knows that you need them all. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be given you besides. Do not worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow will take care of itself. Sufficient for a day is its own evil. Verbum Domini Jesus is speaking to all of us today. And the core message of this gospel reading is he's telling us not to worry. But in many instances, that is easier said than done. Sometimes it's very difficult not to worry. But the Lord is telling us here and throughout this chapter 6 here in Matthew's Gospel that the answer to not worrying is, of course, him, is Jesus, is having a relationship with him. We have a deep relationship with him, a strong one, then we, we love much. And if we love much, then we trust much. So this is the answer here. A strong relationship with Jesus. And, and you know, our, our relationship with the Lord will be strengthened, you know, for all eternity. Because remember, I mean, God is, is all love. I mean, it's going to take a whole eternity to really know him. Because he's that great, that magnificent. And God in his great magnificence provides for each and every one of us. Because he loves us much. And so today we're going to talk about a little bit about what, what causes us to worry, the type of worries we have, and what Jesus is saying, really saying about worry, and hopefully we'll have some insights to help us avoid uh, worry. And when Jesus here is speaking about worrying, 
he's, he's not saying that we shouldn't be concerned about something. Of course we're going to be concerned. I mean, we, we all, we're, we're people, you know, we, we have human beings. We, we care about, about others. We care about our things, you know, we, we love. And, you know, if something, somebody we love is, is harmed or, or, or ill or anything like that, or even our things, you know, we, we have some concern. But Jesus is saying to avoid worrying, which means that we are inv- to avoid being anxious about things, particularly material things. And this is anxiousness that we kind of bring about ourselves, uh, we bring upon ourselves. And, you know, uh, I'm not, t- you know, there are some out there who, who may have some kind of medical condition that maybe they, they have some anxiety, maybe uh, some nervousness. You know, the, God knows, okay, and, uh, and, and he understands. I'll, I'll, for, for those of you who have these conditions, do your best. Again, the Lord knows. Relax. Rest in the Lord as best you can. And for most of us, you know, it's very easy to get anxious. And, and you know, this is, again, material things. That's why, you know, Jesus, in, in, before he's telling us not to worry, he's saying that no man can have two masters. You cannot serve God and mammon. And that's what the mammon is. The mammon here is material things. What are, what are these material things? They can come and, and as, as Jesus is, is telling us here, of course, it's property. It's um, food and drink, you know, so th- these, are, these are things, you know, and even money. You know, these are things that, that we can be attached to. See, and, and the more, the, if we have an unhealthy attachment to these things, uh, money, property, and food, then, of course, we're going to worry much about these things. So, you know, we are called here in the spiritual life to detach. Detach from the things that, that, that we have an appetite for. You know, the, the pleasures, the passions. You know, we do that, of course, by, of course, our prayer first and foremost. Penance and, and works of charity. These are the ways we, we detach. Okay. And... And so, you know, I, I know that there are a lot of holy people who are doing these things, but yet you still, we, we can still find ourselves in, in worrying sometimes. Okay, so what are the, the things, that, what are some of the other things we can worry about besides material things? Well, sometimes we can have a, a fear of, a, or a worry, worry much about failure. You know, what, what's... What if, I, what if I lose something? What if I don't perform well? What if I get humiliated? You know, the, the, this is something that we, we shouldn't, we, we should, of course, you know, avoid presumption and prepare for the things that God gives us the best we can. Work hard. But sometimes even that, we can, we can work very hard. We can put a lot of research into something, a lot of time and effort, a lot of energy. And then still we come out failing. Well, hey, we got to see a positive here, is that we learned something. You know, we didn't really fail. And we, 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 we were taught a lesson. Maybe that's a door God closed. Maybe he has something else for us. So, you know, worrying about failure is, is not, a, it's not a good thing. Okay, and, and even if we do our best, God will bring some kind of good out of it. He always does. This is where the trust, this is where we, where, where we get the trust here. And then, you know, sometimes we can worry uh, about the future. Of course, you know, we are to prepare for these things the best we can. This is just being prudent. You know, we, we plan for the future. We can have some savings, you know, 401k, have investments. That's all good. You know, these are all good things, but we don't have to be so attached to them. You know, these, these, this is something that, is, that even is, is given to us by God. And so we are to be wise in 
these, uh, these types of transactions and these ty this type of business. But, you know, to be overly concerned about, like, just always thinking about, like, tomorrow and, well, what if this happens? Or, you know, all these things we can throw in our mind. What if I get hurt? What if somebody, uh, what if my daughter uh, dies or something? What, what if my parents, you know, they get sick and all of that? We shouldn't be so caught up in, in these words. Or what if, we, what if I don't have enough for the future? Of course, you know, we, we can prepare for these things. You know, so we, we shouldn't worry about this. And we can worry about, in regards to the future, especially about suffering or about dying. This is, this is difficult when we think about a loved one here. And first and foremost, we've got to remember, when it comes to worry about anything, is that, you know, we think about, well, the disaster, the pain that will cause us. And of course, you know, when we think about disaster, we think about death, we think about, about, uh, about sickness or anything like that, it, it's scary. But we've got to put this in God's hands. And that we've got to remember that God will never let us be tested upon, uh, let, will never let us be tested with more than we could handle. This is what St. Paul tells us. He always provides a way out. And sometimes we can think about, how oh, do I get sick? And all, oh yeah, all of these things. But hey, God will supply what we need if we do. Sometimes at the last minute. That's trust right there. So well, what, what if I die alone? Or what if uh, oh, I'm getting sick and all of this? And God will always make a way. Remember, he is the way, the truth, and the life. This is it, putting our trust in him. So he provides his grace to us. And as St. Paul tells us, it's according to his riches and glory. You know, there, a good example here is uh, we, there's a, a woman, an elderly woman here, who, uh, comes to, uh, who was coming to the, the noon mass daily. Sometimes she would be, be here at the 7 a.m. mass. It was a very prayerful woman, very faithful. Um, and uh, about a month or, or so ago, uh, she, uh, she was told by her doctors that she had leukemia, and it was at an advanced stage, and she only had a, a few weeks to live. Well, it, this was like an onslaught here, but because she was a, a woman of great prayer, striving to be faithful to the Lord. They told her this news. She was able to receive it with joy. She received it with peace. She says, yeah, they, the doctor says, you may have a few, a few weeks, a few months. She says, well, here I am, Lord. See, we see in this, in the, in this, uh, this story here that God provided the grace when she needed it. See, and so that's why we, sh we shouldn't worry. You know, this is, this is a good example here. We should, we should learn from this. And then, you know, we think about as well that when we start to worry, we, we forget about sometimes what God has done in the past. Now, some of, you, some of you all, you've been good Catholics serving the Lord for many years. And God has brought you through some very difficult uh, trials. Some of you just got to look and say, well, look at, look at what God brought me to, through before. He can do it again. Right now, he's, he's building my faith. He's, he's causing me to, to trust him more. And so, uh, to continue further, you know, first of all, uh, the, we, we need to have our priorities to overcome these worries. And first and foremost, the first priority is putting God first. That's why Jesus tells us, seek first kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be given unto you. You'll have everything. And to remind us of that, we, we can look at the Our Father. Uh, the Our Father is a very powerful prayer, as we know. Look at the Our Father. Our Father, you know, it's, it's putting God first. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. What do we have there? We have, we have, we have God. Wow, awe. Holy God, mighty God. Worship and praise. There he is first. And then the, the submission we have to his will. Your will be done. And then comes the needs. Yeah, of course we could ask him for our needs. You know, God, 
The Lord doesn't want us to be presumptuous and just kind of lay back, oh yeah, he's going to do everything for me. No, he wants us to work. You know, he wants us to be busy doing things. Well, that, that's what, uh, remember, and I forgot to mention this earlier, but sometimes uh, some of us may have a little scrupulosity, worry if we're going to be going to, to heaven. You know, we think that we're doomed to hell almost. We need to trust in the mercy of God. What does God want for us? He wants us to be busy. And I don't mean being busy body. I mean busy with prayer. He wants to be alert, doing works of charity, works of love. He wants to see us trying, working. Remember those, uh, when Jesus speaks about the coming, the second coming, that he wants to find us ready. You know, he, t- he talks about like in the, in the parables that, that some were... Oh, yeah, the master's delayed, so they start beating everybody up and, you know, just living a very worldly life. You know, here comes the master. Whoa, gosh, here he is. You know, they're, they, they're laid back. But no, he, he wants us to be busy seeking first the kingdom of God. He wants to see us working and trying. Yeah, some, some of us, yeah, we may have certain vices, certain sins we struggle with, but work on it. You know, we... And, and trust in the God's mercy that even, even in like the last moments of our life that he will come through. He will make a way for us to repent. And this is why in, in the, uh, uh, something else in, in helping us overcome worry is to look at the cross of Jesus. You know, there, there he is. There's Jesus right there, naked, clothed only in his blood. Look at the poverty of Jesus. Look at the love Jesus is showing us. Look at, look at the total detachment there. Just all mercy. And then he, he's reaching out to, to those two people. You know, he's going to reach out to us. If he does that to, to them, he's going to do it to us too. There's a lot of hope there in the message of the cross. That's why, you know, we see many saints who, who don't worry much. Because why? They... Because they're, they're always gazing upon the cross, like St. Paul and St. Francis. St. Paul says, I desire to know nothing but Jesus Christ and him crucified. St. Francis says the same thing over and over again, and that's all they want to conform themselves to is the cross. Because this cross brings them into a greater union, greater communion with Jesus Christ. And there's a relationship there. There's the strengthening of it in the cross. And so, my brothers and sisters, now we look to Jesus. We submit to him, gaze upon the cross, and know that, you know, God, he's a great provider. Do your best, trust in him, and he will provide. God bless you all.